And I too just want to be just so great, so, so thankful for the invitation for being here to be a part of this, this festival of light and intelligence and beauty that has shown through all of the speakers that were here today. We're, we're the last speakers today. Well, let's just love up all the ones that came before us. Woo! And you've been here all day. It kind of reminds me of a story of Miles Davis and Charlie Parker walking through Europe one day, and they walked for a few miles in silence, complete and utter silence. And then Miles looked at Charlie and said, that about says it all, doesn't it? Everything has been said. Look, look, look around the room and see who's swimming with you right now. Just get a sense of the beings that are in this room, those who have made an intention to be here all day to be a part of an idea sphere. And realize, of course, there's not one throwback in the bunch. <laughs> that this divine presence, whatever name we choose to call it, that recreates itself out of its own image and out of its own likeness, is revealing eternity through each and every being here. The theme for the day has been the dream is real, and my part of it is called let your dream awaken you. And like Ricky, she pulls a lot of the composition straight out of the dream world from her magnificent fairies. And me, a lot of the, the flow that happens through me comes from lucid dreaming as well. I get insights and revelations from dreamings that have changed my life. Over 30 years ago, I was attending USC. I was a psychobiology major. My path at the time was medicine. I was going to go to med school. And I had a series of dreams and inner initiations that, that totally rocked my world. And one of the dreams that, that culminated this particular uh, uh, dimension of my life, I was being chased by two men, and this particular dream lasted for a number of months, and finally it culminated with two of the men holding me down, thrusting a knife in my heart, and I died. The, the pain was physically intense, emotionally, and I died. And when I woke up, I could see that we were literally surrounded by what I called love beauty. That was my name for God at the time, this divine presence, because I was more agnostic at the time. And, and, and so all I could see was this love and the beauty. I felt as if I was being penetrated by the universal presence, as if I was the only being alive. There was so much love coming into me, and I felt absolutely, totally worthy, totally taken care of, totally filled to overflowing with the love of the universe. And the beauty was intense. Everything was alive and shimmering with, with this life, with this beauty, with this essence from a piece of lint to a plant in the room to everyone. This is the way it is now. Everything alive with this dynamic love beauty. And so I went on a search to discover what had happened to me, what had opened up in me, that I could see that we were surrounded, that, that this presence wasn't in everything, but that everything was in this presence that we live, move, and have our being in this dynamic presence of love and beauty and intelligence. And it's, a, it's constantly expressing itself and looking for instrumentalities through which to reveal its essence. As you have heard today, the intelligence and the, the brilliant ideas from the idea sphere flowing through the presenters here today. And I discovered as I dis began to research the, the major religions and the major avatars and the wonderful mystics and the teachers uh, that have of course, at bottom, their insights were the same, that, that there was an event that took place in consciousness that allowed them to become aware of something that was inherent within all of us that was bubbling up to the surface. And as it became strong in some, religions galvanized around them, or, or art emerged from them, or divine creativity flowed uh, through them, and it radically changed my life. And I, I began to, to move and hear the this, this inner voice, and I can remember at the age of 27, the voice said, it's time to go public. And I was scared to death because I was an introvert, like the woman was talking about. I loved having my private love affair with this love beauty that was everywhere. My muse, my love, my beloved. And the voice said, it's time to go public. 
And so I put myself in positions after that particular uh, encounter uh, to be able, to, be able to, to speak to people one at a time, two at a time, healings, uh, 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 counseling, ultimately going through school, graduating with degrees and that type of thing in order to ultimately found the Agape International Spiritual Center. So from that dream awakening in me, I can see that each and every one of us is a unique spiritual composite idea that contains every single idea that the cosmos has. Every idea is contained within all of us that we are here to surrender and yield to it so that the cosmos uh, with the K that contains the undifferentiated wholeness, the primordial void of darkness out of which everything arises and all of the universes and the galaxies, uh, that which is the invisible bursting into expression as the physical visible, elegant expression of the all that is. Each of you contain all of that. All of that is within you. All of that. And so we're, however you've been labeled from time to time in your unfoldment, in your development, if you have not been called an emanation of the Most High, it's been a lie. You are an emanation of the Most High. And then... There was uh, this other, other, uh, other, other dream that occurred, and there's been many. I mean, Ricky can tell you, I wake her up many times, and, 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 and this particular one I called uh, dreaming myself awake or uh, falling awake. And we went to bed, I went to sleep, and as I fell asleep, I fell awake. And I could see myself in all of humanity. And I traveled lucidly throughout, around the planet, and I could see the light of the divine. At this particular perspective, my life was the life of the divine. I could see myself in all of humanity. And this divine light of intelligence and beauty and love was bubbling up to become conscious of itself in all of humanity. And I could see the ceilings in individuals, their beliefs, their perspectives, their opinions, their points of view, their positionalities, uh, uh, all of that that might be hindering the bubbling up of this light seeking to express itself by means of them. And this went on all night. I could see groups of individuals, and I could see the light seeking to become conscious of as the individual. I could see one being, and I, I traveled to the Dogon tribe, and I could see their perspective, and I could see that they saw things way beyond the Western world saw. The perspective was, was much wider, and this went on all night. And then the sun began to shine through my window. And as it shined through my window, I, I, I woke up, became body conscious again, and I said, I'm Michael now. And I woke up, Ricky, and I said, I'm Michael now. And she said, yeah. And, and I said, no, I've been everybody else all night. I've been traveling. I've been the light within all beings. And I began to describe what was happening, and I could see this glow around her. And it was becoming brighter and brighter. And so first I thought, my God, she's catching what I'm saying. She's starting to really become bright here. And then I thought, no, she's always shining. I'm just noticing it right now. She would agree with the latter, of course. That's right. Which is true. <laughs> I mean, when we talk about Moses seeing the burning bush, Moses was just having a good day because the bush is always burning. There's, there's, never, a, there's never a moment when all of the foliage and all of the light and every and all of that is always glowing and 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 this is a diversion i can remember when i was in africa with a working with a particular shaman and he took me out into the jungle and i we were talking and communing with the trees and after i left the jungle pitch black everything was aglow it was like daylight in the jungle in the dead of night because i could see through the luminosity of the foliage coming off off of the trees and off of the grass so everything is glowing. So I began to tell Ricky about what had happened that night and what I got from that particular dream, a reminder that this light within us that's inexhaustible, that has no beginning and will never end and is always unfolding to reflect and to reveal the infinitude of the presence, it's going to win. It's going to win. It's going to win. I, I want you to know now that that light that is within you it is going to win. It, you may have time. All it has is eternity. <laughs> it's going to unfold. And yes, we're on the brink and the precipice of such devastation for the, for the world and for our species and, and for all of, of species 
that are on the planet, but this planet itself is alive, and its octave has increased, and it has become more conscious, and it is waiting for all of us to become more conscious, to vibrate at a higher level, to allow that which is within us to unfold in ways beyond our wildest imaginings. And then there was this other dream. My latest uh, was at Maui. It was in December. Right? We were here. And as I fell asleep, I was pulled into this vortex of uh, I could feel the pain and the suffering of humanity. It was a debilitating experience and a debilitating dream. It was so debilitating that for days I was afraid to even go to sleep because I didn't want to feel that again. And I could feel the pain that was going on on our planet. Uh, people dying, people suffering, uh, people not knowing where they were going to eat the next day, all manner of pain. And it opened my heart up to such a deep sense of compassion. The heart broke. And uh, the highest form of love, compassion, began to come forth. And then as the evening went on, it, compassion uh, uh, unfolded into humility. There was a, a deep humbling, a deep awareness that there's this tremendous something going on that we have nothing to do with, but we have to participate in it in order for it to reveal itself through and as us. And that sent me into a sense of darkness uh, uh, that continued for a couple of weeks. I just came out of it recently, and I want you to know I'm so happy about that. But... <laughs> <laughs> All of the inner technology and spiritual technology that I've learned over the years kept me sane, moving through that sense. Uh, uh, but the sense of compassion... And the sense of connection, the web of connection that we have with all people is, is real. And what I was reminded of is the truth that we're not here to beg and beseech a reluctant deity to give us anything. We are here to come into a deep sense of gratitude, humility, availability, celebration of what has already been given so that it can be activated within us so that we can express it. In other words, uh, I can say electricity is all in this room, but it needs an instrument. It needs a light bulb in order to manifest and to reveal itself as the effulgence and, and the light. This presence is everywhere. Love is everywhere. Peace is everywhere. Joy is everywhere. These are eternal qualities, not merely the absence of conflict. These are eternal qualities that are real, but they need instrumentalities through which to express through. So we are not here to beg God to come down and give us a miracle. You are the miracle. You are, you're the miracle already. And the presence, the presence is waiting for you to up-level your filaments, your wattage, so that that which is potential, that is everywhere, can have access so that you can express it within us. And you have heard the speakers today. Within us are every single idea that is necessary to go to the next stage of our evolution on this particular planet. There's not anything that is missing in a quantum field, in a unified field. There cannot be a problem without a solution. That's an impossibility. The moment there is a problem, which means emblem, the emblem of a state of consciousness that's hindering the flow of solution, the moment there's a problem, the answer already exists. And so we are here to up-level our awareness through our dynamic intentionality, our spiritual practice, in such a way that we catch these spiritual ideas and then become bold enough to anchor them with thought, word, and action. Therefore, we can understand why Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. never came and said, my friends, I've got a complaint. No, he said, my friends, I've got a dream. He didn't leave with, I've got a complaint. I've got a problem. I've got an unsolvable issue. No, he said, I've got a dream. I'm pulled in substance. I'm pulled by a vision. I'm pulled by something that is seeking to express itself by means of us. And what you have heard here this day are individuals who have become available enough to catch the ideas from the idea sphere and to begin in their own way to anchor them in time and space to make a mighty difference for all of us on this human race at this time in human history. 
We can say that humanity goes through at least four domains. There's survival, and, and then there's usefulness, and then there's art and beauty, and then ultimately there's the unfoldment of the soul. And as we unfold our soul, we go back to art and beauty. You are here. Because we, are, we already know how to survive. We're over-surviving in the, in the Western world. We know about usefulness. We know how to create tools and technology. Now we're making ourselves available. So that the art and the beauty and ultimately the evolution of our soul becomes paramount. So that we can catch the ideas that are everywhere and then anchor them in time and space so that we take the great leap. I want you to know that you can dream yourself awake. You can go to sleep at night and you can invite the fairies. You can invite the great spirit. You can invite the great God of the universe. You can invite the oversoul. You can invite the power that is within you to speak through you in a language and in a way that you can understand. But you're going to have to be willing to be transformed, to be changed. Because uh, that is a domain. If we're dealing with spiritual technology, there would be a survival. I know I've got a couple of minutes left, but I'm talking as fast as I can. <laughs> we, we go through survival, adaption, transformation, and dissolution. And this is the time for real spiritual transformation. To real come together and celebrate. To lift our awareness, catching ideas that will transform us. So that we can become more ourselves, anchoring the realm of ever expanding good on earth as it is in the mind of God. Look around the room one more time and see who's swimming with you in this ocean of devotion, who's been here all day. Look at these sweet beings. Now, look at just one of them. Just look at one of them right in the eye and say, My God, you're gorgeous. <laughs> Don't be shy. My God, you're beautiful. There's so much promise in you. There's so much beauty in you. And we have arrived here to keep our promise to set ourselves free. Okay? Say it. We have arrived here to keep our promise. Give, give your neighbor a high five or a hug. And be aware in this touching and agreeing that the new form of worship is gratitude and celebration. Celebrating what has already been given. That it may be set free as the activity of our awareness. I think that about says it all. I love you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for your receptivity. Thank you for showing up in this idea sphere and allowing these ideas that have been presented all day to lift you into new ways of being, new ways of seeing, and new ways of expressing. I know for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, we're surrounded by love and beauty. I know for sure that there's a light within us that's begging to be expressed through us. I know for sure that deep compassion is seeking to express by means of us that there's indeed suffering going on, but we're changing the story so that we may be free. Ricky BB, it's time for us to get out of here. <laughs> what you got? Love. Love, love, love everybody. Love, everybody rise. Love, love when it's hard. Love when to it's love. hard to do. Love, our loving will change the world. Share who you are. Share, 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 share who you are and share, share. Share, share when it's hard, when it's hard to, to share. do. Share, our sharing will change the world. Yeah. Our sharing will change the world. Sing it out, sing it out. Our loving will change the world. What, what, what? Our loving will change the world. Very quickly. Our loving will change the world. Aloha! 
Aloha!